AGI is, is coming here. Yep, these models. Some people are saying AGI yeah, is some, here. Yeah. The definition of general intelligence is that you can learn something in one context and apply it in another context, and that's not what's happening here. The As process they're focusing on these objective measures. There are other things that are going on unnoticed and that are actually a lot worse. To do that and then putting it off like it's a generally intelligent model is just not accurate. OpenAI has had their 12 days of Christmas and they've been announcing quite a lot of things. Um, one of which has been their very reasonable O1 Pro mode priced at a low price of the 200 low, low price. Yeah. Of two hundred dollars a month per month, yes. Yeah. Uh, but that is not the latest biggest news anymore, as they just announced their O three models. Yeah. And that is that has been making some waves. Everyone is like, "Oh my God, AGI, AGI is coming is here." Yep. These models. Some people are saying AGI yeah, is some, here. Yeah. But and some people are like, "Okay, looks like we're we're you know." making some nice progress towards the AGI that will take over the world and solve uh -huh. all our problems. So that's that's nice. Um, <laughs> but I, I think that that what we're seeing here is something that's very interesting um, that has does not have uh, that that is not lacking precedent, uh, shall I say. Um, essentially, what you're seeing is that these models are much better at objective problem solving. Um, they essentially, OpenAI set these certain metrics for themselves. They're like, oh, okay, we're going to measure the intelligence of our models using these objective metrics because it's it's really hard to not use objective metrics yeah i think it's right? like less hallucinating of the model yeah and it's, more it's like, like ph yeah data. phd science questions yeah for the o3 model they are using competitive coding um as as a metric as well um yeah. and a lot of complex mathematical questions all of those sorts of things um and i think that things that are a you have an objective right answer to. Yeah, and, and so they set these metrics for themselves. They're beating their metrics. Uh, and I would say this is something that- They're beating those specific metrics. metrics. Yes, and, and these are metrics that, you know, they are consistently using in their research so that they can say, hey, look, our model is getting better compared to the previous model. Um, and so I would say that what we're seeing here, what we've noticed is that it seems like they're focusing in on these metrics specifically to try to show that their models are improving. But it's, I think that but in the as process- they're focusing on these objective measures, there are other things that are going on unnoticed and that are actually a lot, a lot worse. Yeah, um, I, I would say that in, in the process of that, they're actually proving that these models lack general intelligence because uh, what we saw from the, the research that they published on the O1 model, they are are worse. They're, they're, they're they even gave a disclaimer about it. Yeah, they're, they're performing worse than GPT-40 on persuasive writing. Yeah. And they're, they're giving this disclaimer of like, you know, this might not be suitable for all natural language tasks, the O1 set of models. And it's like, okay, no wonder, because you're teaching to the test of these measurable metrics. And so let me, I can explain that a little bit more. Essentially, they're, they're setting these objective metrics, which we've already talked about is not an accurate representation of how intelligent these models are if you're trying to measure for all aspects of cognitive ability, which would include creative intelligence, emotional intelligence, and general intelligence. Um, and so just asking for answers to objective questions is, one, something that can easily be improved upon in terms of benchmarks because, of course, you can know how many more math questions this this model got right because there's an objective answer to those yeah. math questions. It'd be much harder if it's like, you know, how much better of a stand-up comedian is ChatGPT, mm -hmm. right? And so I think that, that because of that, they're really focused in on improving these specific benchmarks. Um, and so because of that, they're kind of contorting the model. It's like when you see those bodybuilders who are like, they're always working their upper body. They've got the, this like <laughs> triangle shape to yeah. them. Where they their they skip like leg triangle, day and then they're like, yeah. But their legs are super, super skinny. Yeah. So, so they now can do like a thousand <laughs> of pounds these. of benchmarks. Yeah. <laughs> yes, like, yeah, of bench presses. Uh, the moment they try and run. Do a squat. They're yeah. like, 
they yeah they fall down so that's yeah. that's the equivalent of what they're doing with these models <laughs> is they're is they're skipping leg day that's what we're trying to say is uh -huh. that you need to do leg day um you want but... <laughs> a well-rounded <laughs> model yeah exactly and i i think that um because of this part of this is that they want to try to show that these models are improving exponentially. Um, but the, the fact of the matter is that the definition of general intelligence would mean that as a model improves on one aspect, it would at least stay the same in another aspect of, of, of their abilities. The ability right? of general intelligence is being able to uh, learn something in one field and then create a a generalized concept in your mind mm -hmm. not a, a specific and anecdotal thing that you learned yeah uh but being able to take that and then because it's generalized mm -hmm. apply it in another area yeah. and so when you're learning it's also growing everything else yeah and and so i think that what you're seeing is that and that's not what you're seeing <laughs> yeah yeah you're not seeing that what you're seeing is that these models are getting better for you know people who are very focused on getting the objective facts right we've heard that like you know academics are you know saying that okay this model is much better for those sorts of for those sorts of tasks because it requires for you to make sure you have all of your objective facts down Right. Yeah. But then when we we tried using the O1 preview for some of our you know creative tasks and it just kind of sucked. You know, we're like, yeah, this is not like, good. I'd use like, 4 yeah, four O was better, and we we were like, okay, why is this the case? And then now we're seeing what they're doing in terms of trying to show like, look, that's what that's what all of these announcements are about. Look, we hit our benchmarks. Look, our benchmarks are so much better. But when yeah. it's like, okay, let me use the model and like. Tr and for actual creative use cases, right? And so I think that what you're seeing is that, okay, if the, the definition of general intelligence is that you can learn something in one context and apply it in another context, and then, and, and that's not what's happening here. They're, they're just specifically, what they're focused on is, 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 is training these models with reinforcement learning on these objective problems. And so, of course, they're going to get better at the objective problems, right? Yeah. Um, and so I, as you put more weights on those specific uh, on those specific metrics, then you're going to leave some other things unnoticed. Mm -hmm. But it's like, OK, um, one thing I find interesting is how they were actually training their models before to be more well rounded around this. Mm -hmm. Although some of them, although they they do hallucinate more. Yeah. And yeah, and I think that that part of they're kind of making the same mistakes that our traditional education system is making, which is focusing on these objective metrics. And, and we can see the same thing happening to kids in school where they're not being taught general intelligence because schools are so focused on, you know, having them memorize facts and just accept here's what you're supposed to do. Um, and the, the problem with with that is that humans actually can be generally intelligent, unlike these deep learning neural nets. Um, and so, you know, that's that's a big mistake of our traditional schools. But I think it's actually contributing to the problem of making these neural nets actually, you know, generally worse in the sense of being able to just like, you know, have a lot of different abilities um, and, in, you know, not sacrificing on one aspect by improving another is, yeah. is because the general populace has all gone through the public education system. And so they want to see the objective metrics. Oh, what yeah, are what are sense. the grades that yeah. ChatGPT <laughs> got? Right. And the grades are better. And so they're like, wow, AGI is coming. But it's like, no. And 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 the entrepreneurs, the innovators are picking up on that. I, I, I did want to read one tweet. Um, somebody posted, serious question, what should a CS student um, do at this point? Even if the model is $2,000 per month, it's still cheaper than a graduate employee. What's the plan now? And so they showed the O3 um, benchmarks in software engineering and how the O3 model is much better than O1. And so at Sporadicalia, said push yourself to discover more interesting things to build with software the bottleneck is no longer grinding lead code and knowing certain programming languages the bottleneck is true legitimate god-given creativity and insight my advice learn to dream and this is just 
perfect advice in terms of what humans should be doing in this environment where you do have these very powerful models. Yeah. But, I, but I think that what you're seeing more and more is that these LLMs are becoming a utility. You know, Elon Musk was able to catch up very fast with his own, you know, X Grok AI, whatever it's called. Those um, main breakthroughs that have happened um, around uh, improving the 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 AI models like ChatGPT without having to sacrifice anything mm -hmm. has happened, and yeah. and the and it's not a secret. Like the information <laughs> is out there, so yeah. you know. Uh, Elon Musk and, and, and his company, they probably have a lot of data. Mm -hmm. And so they were able to access it and, and build it up really yeah. quickly. Yeah. And, and so they, they've caught up really fast. Google has their own model. Facebook has their own model. And so, you know, now these models are not, not hard to access. Anybody can use them. Uh, and I think more and more you're seeing that these LLMs are a utility. Um, and so because of that, I think... That's even what Sam Altman was saying. Yeah. Which is actually kind of weird because that was... <laughs> That wasn't the message he was putting out before. Yeah. Uh, the message, they're still kind of putting it out of like, oh, oh AGI. AGI is yeah. the mission, right? <laughs> that's that's their mission statement is yeah. to build AGI. Yeah. Uh, which is very different from, okay, this is a tool mm -hmm. that will just be used in everything to enhance it. Right. Instead so of this is a a. a a thing that's better than a human being in all ways and is going to take over the planet. Yeah, so I, I, <laughs> I think Sam Altman is caught in a tough spot, a rock in a hard place, which is one that, you know, as we've explained in previous podcasts, AGI is not something we believe will originate from deep learning neural nets. Um, and, and because of that, you're, you know, you're seeing that all these other companies are able to, you know, easily catch up and have something that can perform on par. Yeah. Um, and so I think that then, but what you're also seeing is that OpenAI's mission statement is to build AGI. And this has been the big narrative ever since ChatGPT 3.5 and, and 3 first came out. It's very sensational, yeah. you know. <laughs> uh, they get a lot of excitement from it if they're saying like, oh, oh, we're, we're, we're getting closer to to AGI, yeah. you're, you're going to get more people looking at your stuff if you say that. Yeah. And so I think because of that, you know, they're still trying to capitalize on this narrative of AGI by trying to hit these benchmarks and show that these models are improving. But at the same time, in a recent interview with Sam Altman, he was talking about how these models are becoming more commoditized and that Grok AI is a serious competitor. Do you fear that all this be becomes commoditized as a result? I think the technology itself, to, to the degree you believe deep learning is just like, sort of like a law of physics, then yes, that part will be done by lots of people. And that now he's saying these LLMs are gonna be like the transistor. It's just gonna be ubiquitous in everything. The one I like is the transistor all of the world. Like look at all the things in this room with transistors, but we don't think about that as a transistor device. And we don't think about Google as a transistor company, even though they wouldn't be here without one. And I kind of think that's what's going to happen with AI. Yeah. You know, it's just going to be some, a new groundbreaking technology. That and sounds a little that's, different, yeah. Sam Altman. <laughs> which, is, which is very different from the AGI narrative. I don't think that he's going to like you know call out that disconnect and say hey guys you know i don't think he's I, going to either i, I don't that, think that would suit him very i mean well. i think that right now they're still trying to ride the narrative because they can by continuing to improve upon these benchmarks even if they're sacrificing on other areas of the model but not ve for very long like it's it's well it was clear to us like if if you have i, I think i think people have different ideas of what AGI is mm -hmm. um but we think that that AGI is uh, well it is is to be able to have all the abilities that a human has like to be able to be creative and, mm -hmm. and to imagine and to be able to learn more about programming without having your ability to write go down <laughs> yeah yeah exactly yeah. um and and like I said before the actual definition of general intelligence yeah that, that's that's not what we're seeing. Yeah. And so I think part of what um, we predict to be happening is that the 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 value of these specific like use cases for for these LLMs is definitely something that 
you know, is being capitalized on is in is a huge opportunity for for developers to use the APIs of these LLMs to build custom solutions in specific for specific use cases, you know, let's build a model specifically for programming or specifically for academics, yeah. or specifically for creative writing and being able to sacrifice in other areas if people don't care about those other areas, because that's definitely going to be, uh, you know, a lot of people looking for specific use cases in models that perform better for those specific use cases. Mm -hmm. But that's not the kind of, you know, base general model that's needed to for these other developers to be working on, uh, like on top of, right? What I think that what OpenAI should be really focused on is, you know, and other pe places. Who yeah, are and, and other creating. other people who are creating these base models for people yeah. to build on top of is making sure that you're still generalized and not working towards a specific goal that's sacrificing in those other areas. That's what these other developers can start to do for specific use cases. But trying to to do that and then putting it off like it's a generally intelligent model is just not accurate, yeah. right? You're, you're trying to put out this bodybuilder that's shaped like a triangle and saying like, oh, he's the most fit person in the world. The uh, top half <laughs> of him is. Yeah. <laughs> the but bottom like, half is, is not something fit. Missing here right yeah. <laughs> and so and i i think that that's what i we're... mean if you look at the top half <laughs> of the thing then it's and like, that's yes, what they're that's doing in fit. this in these research papers is they're only taking a picture of the top half of their bodybuilder yeah you're just cropping <laughs> yeah you're cropping, cropping the out, out the legs <laughs> and that's what we're seeing um and so <laughs> yeah so so i think that this is what these you know uh, that that this is what these LLMs should be focusing on and that there's a lot of opportunities for developers to really take advantage of this. And I think for people going into this world where we have such powerful tools, what you should be focusing on is is learning to dream, you know, learning to, to develop your own creative, emotional, general intelligence, because that's what these models can't substitute. Um, and I think that that's what we're we're trying to do and that's something that will increasingly become a part of this conversation.